Long Legs is definitely the most talked about horror movie in 2024 so far. There is no doubt about that. But it's also one of those movies that is going to be very difficult to do a review without giving away the plot and some massive spoilers. So this is your warning now for major spoilers. Okay, so Long Legs has been promoted as this best serial killer horror movie um, since Silence of the Lambs, which in my own personal opinion was a very silly thing to say because it isn't. I don't think Long Legs comes anywhere near to being on the same level as Silence of the Lambs. However, this isn't me saying that Long Legs is a shit movie or anything like that. I just think when the marketing team put things like that out there in the trailer, people are automatically going to compare it. And not only that, but the overhype for this movie has been insane. And even though I did enjoy the movie, it is not the scary film that I have seen in a decade. So I am now going to delve into the whole movie plot and try and break everything down. So at the start of the movie there is this little girl who goes out into her garden to play in the snow and then she is confronted by this person where we only see half of the face. Of course this is Nicolas Cage playing long legs and it's actually quite a unnerving scene. It kind of reminds me of the original opening scene from Stephen King's It when the little girl sees the clown. Anyway, Long Legs face is revealed for a very very split second before the Long Legs title pops up on the screen and with, you know, with this really loud edge of your seat sound effects which I thought was really great and effective. We then time jump after the opening credits where we follow Detective Lee Harker who has the sort of psychic abilities on certain things that can sometimes help her in crime cases that she's working on and she goes through this little sort of psychic test before being assigned with her new boss agent Carter who is working on the, the long legs killer cases you know and long legs is a serial killer who appears to kill families but there is never any evidence to show that long legs was even in the building. The only clue that's ever left behind is a note that has this strange code at the murder scenes and it is signed Long Legs. It's mentioned that these family murders are looking as if maybe the dads of the families are killing the families before killing himself, creating this whole mystery of why are the families killing themselves and who is long legs what you know what's long legs doing what is his role in these murders if they are indeed murders if long legs had never left any notes then nobody would even know that long legs existed it's not long before lee harker is able to sit down with all of these coded letters that long legs has left over the last decade or so of these murders she manages to decode it all and she discovers this pattern of these murders where where basically that is happening during a young girl who were in these families these young girls are born on the 14th of a certain month and these murders are happening on the girls birthdays which ends up creating this sort of satanic symbol when it's drawn down on the pattern of the murders there is a surviving girl called Carrie Ann Camera from one of the murdered families who was away at a school trip during her family murder. Now she has basically been held in this mental institute in a catatonic state for the last decade, basically since the murders. But after Carrie receives a mysterious visitor, Carrie comes out of her catatonic state. So Lee and Agent Carter, they go down, they visit Carrie and Carrie reveals that just before her family killed each other they received a doll from her local church and this is where things get a little bit more strange that adds to the whole mystery there are these dolls that long legs is making and inside the doll's heads are these are these hollow sort of metallic balls but other than that these are just dolls what are these dolls doing? Well, more on that in just a moment. Throughout the movie, Lee has these telephone calls with her mother where we see that they seem to have a very maybe strange mother-daughter relationship. Maybe this is because Lee Harker 
seems to be a bit of a recluse character. Who knows? But later on, it is revealed that the little girl at the start of the movie was indeed a very young Lee Harker. Now, Long Legs came to visit Lee when she was just a little girl one day before her birthday. Lee ends up taking a photo of Long Legs before her mother had run out onto the scene and she's trying to get this strange man to go away and leave her young daughter alone. Now, Lee doesn't actually remember any of this as an adult, but when she does go and visit her mum, this is where things are a little bit more revealed. Her mum explains to her that she never throws anything out and that all of her things are still in the bedroom from when she was a little girl. So this is when Lee finds the photo of long legs that she had taken way back back then and the cops are then able to catch long legs and then arrest him and bring him in for questioning now the scene where lee harker sits down with long legs and she questions him in my opinion this is the best scene of the, the of the entire film this is where nicholas cage really delivers an unhinged performance now at this stage of the movie lee thinks that long legs has an accomplice she thinks that someone else is either committing these murders or forcing in somehow forcing these families to kill each other. How? I don't know. But she quizzes Long Legs about this, but he ends up smashing his face over and over again into the desk and killing himself. Yes, Long Legs dies before the final act has even begun. It's moments like this that really throws you off guard of where the hell this movie is going. Nothing is quite making any sense at this stage. Who is committing these murders or suicides? What are all these dolls all about? And Long Legs has just killed himself in quite a horrific fashion. Surely that's the end of the murders? Well, <laughs> not quite. All of this mystery plays out in the final act when it's revealed that Lee Harker's mother is Long Leg's accomplice. It turns out that at the start of the movie, when Long Legs came to visit a very young Lee Harker, he was there to kill her because her birthday was on the 14th. But Lee's mum manages to make a deal with Long Legs to spare her daughter's life but in return that now means that lee's mum is now working for long legs and long legs has been living in the basement of you know the mother's house making these dolls but once again what the hell are these dolls all about well it turns out long legs is the devil yep you heard me right when he makes these dolls, he puts in these hollow metallic balls into the dolls' heads and he puts a little bit of his devil's power into the balls of these dolls. Lee's mum then dresses up as a nun and she goes to these families' houses on a young girl's birthday on the 14th of a certain month, telling them that they have won first prize in this sort of lucky dip thing from the local church. So the families, they let Lee's mum into the homes because, you know, they think that she is a nun and she's part of the, you know, she's working for the church. So she is basically delivering these satanic dolls to the families. Now, the dolls that have a little bit of long legs inside them, they end up possessing the family members using the dads, from what I remember, for the most part anyway. And then it's the dads who end up killing the whole family before killing himself. Now, the whole time, Lee's mum is there witnessing all of these murders unfold in front of her eyes. Once they are all dead, she is the one that is leaving the long leg notes and then leaves. When when Lee learns about this, you know, from her mother, she finds this doll of herself, which Lee ends up shooting. And this is when we see this sort of like black smoke. I'm assuming it's like satanic smoke coming out of the doll. And then Lee falls to the floor where I'm, well, basically I'm assuming that this is the evil spell that she has been under since she was a little girl being released. But when she wakes up later on, she realizes that her mum has gone to her boss his house, Agent Carter's house, because it is indeed his daughter's birthday 
on the 14th. So Lee rushes over, but it's it's too late. The doll has been delivered. Her mum is sitting there dressed up as a nun. And then during this final scene, Lee tries to talk to her boss, but the long legs evil has already taken over. And then, you know, her boss, he ends up killing his wife in the kitchen. And then he comes back into the living room covered in blood. He then goes to kill his daughter, but Lee ends up shooting him before then also shooting her mother. Lee then goes to shoot the doll, but the gun won't fire. Now, it's not really explained whether if the gun has ran out of bullets or it just won't fire because the long legs evil forces is stopping it. Either way, this doll won't die and the movie ends, leaving Lee's fate up in the air, leaving it up to us, the audience. And wow, it is a lot to take in and I tell you what, this is the type of movie that you need to watch two, maybe three times to get the whole gist. Maybe, maybe catch things that you missed on the first run. But in simple, clear terms, Long Legs is the devil spreading his devil evil things to kill these families. What is Long Legs Endgame? No idea. There are a lot of things that are just not explained, or maybe they were explained, but it just made no sense to me. I do believe maybe a lot of it is left to the audience imagination which sometimes works but for me it's driving me a little bit mad. So was I impressed with the movie? Well yes and no. First of all this isn't the movie that I was expecting. I was not expecting this movie to turn into this whole like Satan devil thing that happened. I thought it was going to be more of a serial killer realism movie like Silence of the Lambs. And you see, this is why the marketing team on the trailer should have left that little bit out. So you should not have put it in the trailer. Now, even though the movie doesn't play out in the way that I thought, you know, in terms of the storytelling aspect, it did make it interesting in certain little ways. I will be totally honest with you, when the end credits started rolling, I did turn to my hubby Peter and I said, what the hell? did we just watch? I was a little bit confused. Now, Pete thought that the film was okay. It was messed up, but he didn't find it scary. And I have to agree, it wasn't scary. There were a few creepy moments, but aside from that, it was not the scariest movie of the decade. If you're going to see this movie thinking it is, then you're going to be massively disappointed. The positive things about this movie is Nicolas Cage's performance as Long Legs. I think he did a, you know, a massive, amazing job. But I did predict in my trailer reaction video to this movie that I thought that he would be brilliant in this role and he really, really is. I didn't find his whole face very scary, but his whole unhinged persona was very genuinely creepy. And if I was to ever bump into long legs in the street, I would shit myself. Now, Micah Monroe, who plays Lee Harker, she does a fantastic job. I have a feeling that she might be nominated for an award as well as Nicolas Cage. So, kudos to those two. I loved the opening scene, as mentioned earlier, when we only see the half face of Long Legs before the, the credit name of Long Legs popped up with that massive, loud, you know, scary sound effect. You know, it's quite unnerving, quite uncomfortable to listen to. There's actually another great scene just like this where Lee finds the photo that she took and then we get a very well done jump scare that scared the crap out of me and the rest of the audience in the cinema. Now as well as the creepy sound effects is also the cinematography is just outstanding. They really cleverly put it all together. You get a lot of wide angle shots where you unintentionally end up looking around in the background waiting to see if something's gonna happen or if somebody is gonna end up like walking past the door for example even when there's nothing scary unfolding on the screen you're just you're just automatically doing it and it does create this unconscious tension inside you without you even realizing it at the time so kudos to the whole film team for that now the things that i have mixed feelings on i wish that we had got to see more of the crime scene side of things now what i mean by that is there is a scene where we get to see one of the the victims of the families of these murders and we end up seeing like the rotten dead decaying body under the covers of this bed sheet it is really really gross but 
It's real life. Now, unfortunately, this type of thing happens hundreds of times a day in the whole world. And I think this would have been, I, I would have appreciated the more realism part of this movie. Have we got to see more of that? I know we did get to see a full murder scene during a flashback of one of the dads killing his family with an ax, but I was expecting maybe more of a first perspective view from maybe the detective side, but that's just more of a personal opinion. I'm not 100% sure about this whole doll and the devil side to the movie. I am a little bit on the fence on whether or not if this movie jumped the shark or not. Normally I would hate this kind of twist, but because of the way the movie is shot and put together, the transition doesn't feel like it jumped the shark. It felt quite authentic even though it's not, you know? But half of me is a little bit gutted that we did go down this route and I think this part of the movie is really going to divide people who watch it. Also, as I mentioned earlier, what was the end game for Long Legs? He was doing these murders slash suicides to create this whole satanic symbol thing, but what was the end game and what was that ending all about when Lee couldn't shoot the doll? Is Agent Lee now the new Long Legs? Has she been taken over? Who knows, but I can see a lot of people not enjoying the ending of this movie just for the simple fact that a lot of people, you know, a lot of things aren't explained properly and people are gonna find this ending confusing. Something that this movie has done for me though is that I cannot stop thinking about it. Not because it is scary at all. It's creepy, but not scary. But it's because of all of the, I suppose you could call them puzzle pieces that all slot together throughout the film. It is clever and I think that's what it is. It's a clever horror movie. And you know, the more you think about it, the more questions that pop up in your head. If you're someone who just loves blood and gore and guts, then you're not going to enjoy this movie. It is a bit of a slow burner, which I don't mind as long as it's got a good story that leads on to the bigger things with a big reward, which I think, I do think this movie does execute, but just be prepared guys, it is a slow burner with a heavy dialogue to it. All in all, I am going to give Long Legs a 6.5 out of 10. I do wish I could give it a higher score, but I appreciate what they did with the movie and it does have some really, really cool moments, but it's just the whole, the whole satanic devil thing that just throws me ever so slightly. Maybe I will appreciate this movie more when I watch it again, who knows, but for now it is a 6.5 out of 10 from me. Now I wanna hear all of your thoughts on Long Legs. Let me know what you think of this movie, what bits did you like, what bits didn't you like, and let me know what you interpret at that ending. Okay then guys, thank you all for watching today's video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, stay safe out there, and I will see you all again very, very soon.